We'll put it to you this way, and here's a good definition. We've not offered this before. Action is the dabbling in the specifics of the manifestation. For the most part, most people are offering action instead of offering stable vibration. So most people are offering most of their action in order to compensate for the energy that went awry earlier because they were not aware of it in the earlier subtle stages. So if you're not aware of what you're doing vibrationally in the early subtle stages and you've begun attracting something that there's a momentum coming and the, when the grid fills in, there is a momentum and it doesn't matter what grid it is that's filling in. There's always a momentum. So a lot of people use their action in order to try to compensate for the momentum because they weren't paying attention to what they were doing earlier. It's sort of like the cast on your arm is sort of like that. That was action that you applied after the fact because you weren't paying attention to what you were doing vibrationally before. It is so delicious though to do the grid work first and then as the grid is filling in the action is inspired if you've been listening to us for a while we've been saying this for years that if you tune in tap in turn on to the energy and then do whatever you feel inspired to do not motivated motivated is trying to fix it when it's going wrong inspired is when the vortex is calling you toward it that's that feeling of inspiration and and it's that feeling that you know the rightness of it you just can't hardly stop yourself from doing it it feels so right to you where the motivation is I need to do that that's that obligated thing and we know there are plenty of things you are a very busy bunch you live in a world that is more interconnected than ever before and you have more details that are flowing through your life experiences if we were standing in your physical shoes we would not integrate so specifically with so many people so much of the time because just your awareness of what's going on just your Facebook alone <laughs> can distract you from the from the core of who you are and at the very least we would set a vibrational tone of our of our intentional uh, broadcasting sometimes we would like to say to you just get aligned and then follow your inspiration and then people say so you're saying don't go to work <laughs> and do not make my bed do not mow my lawn do not do any of those things that I feel responsible to do and we say well, the thing about that is, is that when you don't do what you said that you would do, then usually it gets worse. In other words, because not doing something is taking action too. Ooh, not doing it is an action too. Whether you do it or don't do it, you're taking the action not to do it, just like you're taking the action to do it. Have you noticed how difficult it is not to do something? Jerry used to say to Esther, honey, do not pick up that suitcase. And Esther is thinking there's no way in the world that I am not going to help this little person pick up my suitcase. In other words, non-action is more difficult sometimes than action. You want to do what you're inspired to do. Don't make decisions about what you're not going to do. And don't make a lot of decisions about what you are going to do. Make decisions about how you're going to feel and then do anything you feel like doing. And you're going to discover you're going to be way more active in your aligned state. Way more action is going to occur to you you see so then we want to say that since you have different vibrations going on relative to different subjects and often there are things that you just need to do you have responsibilities and you can't just not do them but you could do a better job of doing your vibrational work first and by that we mean meditate more often we would every single day we would take the time to quiet our mind we would we just would because that is the easiest way to sort of clear out the vibrational clutter and then we would make lists of positive aspects and we would make them about things that are really easy to make them about we would not be trying to create with our positive aspect book we would be genuinely tuning ourselves to the frequency of what feels good so we would pick the easiest things in our life that make us always feel good when we think about them and we would feel the pages of our book with that with that with only that and then we would look for reasons to appreciate it as often as possible and then we would do everything else that we feel like we need to do 
the best process that we've ever offered for this. Esther was in a sort of fit of frustration with too much to do. And Jerry and Esther were sitting in a restaurant and they had paper placemats in front of them. And Esther said, Abraham, I don't know what to do. She was sitting there overwhelmed with her list, which was pages and pages and pages long. And so we just encouraged her to draw a line down the middle of the placemat. And we said, on the left side, write, universe, take care of these things. And on the right side, write, I will take care of these things. And then we encouraged Esther to write what she wanted the universe to take care of. And so she made a list. And you know, it was quite a general list. It was quite a general list because she wasn't thinking in terms of the universe washing the car today. She wasn't thinking in terms of the universe doing those things. It didn't compute in her mind. So she wrote general things like help so-and-so feel better and, and help this situation sort of resolve itself. And she just put general things on that side of the list. And she, we encouraged her to go through her list and pick out the things that she really needed to do and then put everything else on the universe side of the placemat. Well, so she did. She went down. It took almost an hour after they had finished their meal for Esther to transfer everything to the placemat. And on her side were only four things. It was something like make a bank deposit and it was some, they were important things that really needed to be done that day. So she accomplished those four things and with relative ease. And to her astonishment, several of the things on the universe's side of the placemat happened without her attention to them. And then she was off and running. What this placemat process actually does is it teaches you to let go. It teaches you to let go of the angst because she only chose the things that she felt were manageable. And in her new decision to only do this much, what she accomplished, which is far more important to the list than anything else, she accomplished a vibrational grid that allowed the universe to do what it's always wanting to do. And the placement process simply got Esther out of the way, you see. Mostly what we'd like to say to you is go do what you need to do and be happy more. And chill more, have more fun, look for more reasons to feel good. You have to realize that through the experience of life of knowing what you don't want and knowing what you do want you have very specifically put the characteristics of what you want into the vortex and the larger part of you has not only been aware of them but has been the vibrational equivalent of them ever since you put them there and every time you have a new experience which causes you to amend it a little bit to change it or expand it a little bit because as you move through life you do that all the time the inner being part of you keeps up with it. So you created it specifically and it stands with such specificity that it stands there really specific. It does. It stands there. It stands there in that perfection that you have assigned. And so now your only work is to allow the perfection that you've assigned to flow into your experience at the perfect moment in time. And that's why we said earlier, when you feel impatience, it means you're not allowing it. Even though it's ready for you, you're not ready for it. It just bounces off of you. Somebody else doesn't walk away with it, but you don't get it. We want you to just chill out. That's why we say things to you like, you never get it done and you can't get it wrong. It's moment by moment by moment. That's the fun of all of it. It would be like being a, a wonderful athlete, let's say a, a tennis player, really enjoying the game, who wins all of the top honors and then says, no point in ever playing again. And we say, really? We thought you were playing because you liked the agility that your body discovered. We thought you liked to play because you liked the clarity and the, and the strength of your body. We, we thought you liked it every time you put that ball right where you meant to put it. We thought you liked the intuitive feeling that you had when you anticipated where the ball was going and you were there to meet it. Yeah. Even when that other guy is so good that he usually surprises people. We thought you liked the game. Are you saying you only like the trophy? You see, and you all came for the game. 
And the game never ends, you see. You got to keep playing. You got to keep playing and you got to keep winning, but you got to keep playing because there's always another game and another game and another game and another game. Every moment, there's another game. There's another point of clarity. There's another opportunity to uplift. There's another opportunity to have way more fun than you've ever had before. That grid is just ripe. The vortex is ripe with whatever the grid is ready to allow, you see. Your work is to prepare the grid. Your work is to be ready for what's ready. It's ready. The question is, are you? Are you ready? And if you're having fun, you're ready. If you're chilling, you're ready. If you're happy, you're ready. If you're flowing with enthusiasm, you're ready. If you're ornery, you're not ready for what's in, in the grid you want. You're ready for what's in those other grids. <laughs> Negative emotion always means you put something there that you're not allowing. You can never not know. We can pronounce you that. You're not ever again gonna not know. You always know. You might deny. You might deny that you know. Or you might resent that you have to hold the vibration. Esther says that to us every now and again. Oh, really? I liked it better before I knew so much. I feel so responsible. And we say, then you're not ready. Feeling of responsibility is not being ready. I feel responsible to my point of attraction. What am I doing wrong? Well, you're feeling responsible and self-critical. You can't allow what you're, what's in your vortex if you're self-critical. You, well, what do I do? How do I learn? How do I be smarter? By, by going general. I understand the laws of the universe. I believe that I offer a point of attraction. I accept that I've lived a lot of life and that I've put it there. I know enough from what I've heard and felt from Abraham to know that these laws are substantial and consistent. I don't want to ask to be the exception in the universe. I can go with the flow of the laws. I can do that. I want to be happy. I want to be happy and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to be happy. I'm willing to stop being responsible if it's necessary to being happy. Now, that's interesting. Oh, I'm no longer going to be responsible. My children will starve. <laughs> Too specific. Too specific. I'm, I'm not going to take on more than is mine to take on. I'm not going to try to control the world. I'm not going to try to control what others are thinking or doing. Lighter, lighter, lighter. I'm going to trust that they all have an inner being. I'm going to trust that they will find their way. I'm going to look for my way and trust that others will find theirs. Lighter, 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 lighter. But what if they don't know what to do? Negative emotion. Too specific. Go general. Well, they'll figure it out. Everybody's not ready for this leading edge conversation. And what they're ready for, the universe will deliver to them. They'll be fine. A lot of people wouldn't be happy knowing what I'm talking about here today. It's too leading edge for them. They're not comfortable with this leading edge conversation. They're ready for what they're ready for. And they have an inner being who adores them, who has their back. And all kinds of non-physical energies that are focused with them. We're not supposed to ever get it all figured out. There's always more to figure out, more, more, more. I'm going to use my point of attention right here and now, my point of power, which is where me and me converge. It's where the non-physical inner being me and the physically focused me is where we converge. I'm going to converge right here in this now moment, and I'm going to feel good while I do it. I'm going to feel good. So then you turn on the television, and there's something troubling. Turn it off. You keep thinking about it. Change the subject in your mind. Change the subject. In other words, just keep reminding yourself, I'm going to tend to my point of attraction, which mostly means I'm going to mind my own business, which mostly means I'm going to do my best to feel good as best as I can. And I'm getting better and better and better and better and better at this. The thing that's interesting is that you all have big lives and the bigger your life is, the more components you have. Sometimes you feel like you have too many moving parts. There's too much for you to control, but there's not too much for law of attraction to manage. And all you have to do is look among the moving parts, pick a target that feels good to you, focus upon it until you've established it as your set point, lock in, lock into it, lock into it and maintain it. And then law of attraction will give you feedback to let you know how well you've done. You see, find the general place and lock into it.